Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the after show. I've been doing these ever since I started Sundays with Char a few weeks ago. And you know what? I cannot believe that we're already so damn close to the damn finish line. Like we have, now that I've completed, you know, Char's episode, Char Johnson, which by the way, go follow her. Go follow, Char's good people to know. She gives out good makeup tips. She's a teacher. Things are good. But, um, you know, what I love about doing this is that I'm having these fulfilling conversations with people that I love and that I respect and that are like good, but we only have three episodes left. And I say that not to say that this won't be like so, not that I won't ever be back, but I say that to say that it might be just a bit more inconsistent. Like I made a dedication to this summer series and you know, I planned it out. It's, it's gonna be 10 episodes in total and we are going to round out on September 20th, I believe, which is the lead into to fall. I think the first official day of fall is September the 21st. So hi everybody, hi Jared. I, I got you all, Jared, I got your email. I've been telling everyone I'm gonna get back to them today. Things have been, you know, it's been an interesting week. So like I was saying, so Sundays with Char will come to a conclusion on September 20th. I have some fun guests. My final home stretch of, of guests, they're, they're gonna be fun. I mean, everybody's been fun. And you know, just to take time out to thank everyone who has done the previous episodes, I've been having great conversation, thought provoking conversation. And I hope that you all watching have gotten something out of this summer series. And like I said, I don't know if I'll be back. So, uh, and I say that because I had to, I decided this week to take a severe step back from my online presence. And now listen, I don't know what that's going to do for bookings. I don't know what that's going to do for my career because I'm a freelancer. So a lot of what I do is rooted in visibility. And if I'm not being visible, how will people know I exist? Right. And I always have this like <laughs> this weird fear of please don't forget about me. Please don't forget about me. Please don't forget about me. You know, with, with, with not thinking that my, that I have an Im, an impact or a solid footprint, so to speak, you know, I kind of live in the, that perpetual state, which I need to break out of and just have full confidence. But the thing is in this rat race of Hollywood in this rat race of this industry, you never want to get too comfortable. You never want to get too comfortable. And yesterday when I was in a meeting, um, I wish I remembered the guy's name. Oh my gosh. But there was a, uh, oh, I feel so guilty for not remembering his name. But he made a transition from um, being a journalist to being a screenwriter. And what he said is when he was in that journalism realm, he wrote, like, let's say I was writing for, I don't know, the West Hollywood Gazette. But my dream was to write for Vogue. You approach everything that you do as if you're writing for Vogue. You don't approach it like you're writing for the West Hollywood Gazette. And so that's what I've been really trying to do. I mean, that's a philosophy that I've always had. But I feel like it's I should remind you all because him saying that was a reminder to me to approach everything that you do, um, you know, professionally as if you are at your pinnacle. Like that's how, you know, what, how, what's his name? Ch I don't, is it Cheo or Chio? I need a phonetic enunciation. Cheo Ho Ho Hodari Coker is his name. I hope I didn't just butcher that. But yeah, like I said, that served as a reminder to me, not that it's anything that I ever forgot, but I'm passing that on to you all to remember, you know, anything that you do, especially if it's your passion project, uh, treat it as if, it is the what you want. So like what I do here, you know, I'm not treating this as if it's just, oh, Char says so on Instagram, Sundays with Char on Instagram. I'm treating this like this is a job that I want, like a real job, like the real called, and they want me on the panel, or the holy, Gr the view called, and they want me on the panel, or, you know, some production company calls, and they want me as a solo person, you know? That's how I, that's how you should treat everything that that you approach, whether that's makeup, whether that's hosting 
whether that anything and I felt like Char also the other Char did a really good job of kind of delving into career transitions and delving into really going into what it's like to kind of straddle that fence between a passion project and also keeping your lights on and food on the table which isn't always easy especially when if you're like me and you sometimes feel like it's a race against the clock like the world tells us that it's you it's never too late it's never too late like tony braxton did you all see the tony braxton um headline tony recently came out in an interview and said that she wishes and this is along the lines of what she said i'm not quoting her verbatim but she basically said that she wishes that in her youth she would have spent more time um you know getting out there having sex and drinking and doing what she wanted to but because she comes from a religious family and has a very uh, strict upbringing she kind of was it was fairly reserved and she feels like time has run out so to speak to kind of explore those things because she's a mom you know she's more mature in age and it's just like listen listen i get that feeling i'm only 32 and i understand <laughs> because the thing is as you get older people have less empathy people have less grace for you and I mentioned that because I'll never forget my first internship shout out to KOCO5 the ABC affiliate of Oklahoma City my first internship one of the reporters there we were talking about heartbreak she and I share a well she's moved on to be an anchor won't say where though but if you're watching hey but she and I share a zodiac sign we're both Capricorns and we were one day in the news truck uh and I was telling her how I had, how, how I had never experienced heartbreak never and she was mentioning how she experienced heartbreak later in life like at 27 but how people don't give the grace to you as you age right so if you get your heart broken at 17 it's a big deal like if you want it to be a big deal you can sit in your your house or your room all day and eat your ice cream and typically people around you will be more understanding if you're someone like me who's 32 <laughs> and get my heart broken for the first time well most people have already gone through the dramatics of experiencing something like that so you know as you get older people are like girl it ain't even that deep but they don't understand like this is my first time and I feel like especially when you come from an LGBT angle, you you might experience things later than um, your cisgender heterosexual counterparts as it as it pertains to love and relationships and things like that. So I don't know why I just went on that tangent, but I guess what I was just kind of reiterating is it's never too late, even though I'm someone who that train of thought kind of still seeps into. Like, I feel like it's a race against the clock. Char, you know, decide. And I've never, ever, ever questioned my journey as far as like what I want to do. Like I've known since I was maybe a senior in high school. I mean, I had multiple interests, but I knew what I wanted to do. But this past week made me question, is this what you want to do? <laughs> and like I, like I mentioned at the top of last hour, I intentionally took a step back from social media because, and shout out to those of you who checked in on me. I'm fine. Everything's good. But I, I understand when someone's like on social media every day and then they just abruptly leave. I understand why people reach out because I would reach out. But I'm here to tell you all that I'm okay. I've just been in here in my cocoon and I've been, um, I've still been keeping up with the news. I just got tired. I got oversaturated with people sharing, you know, the Jacob Blake video and then that 17 year old terrorist who, you know, shot and killed two people and injured a third person. I just got tired of the headlines. I got tired of the hot takes. And I got tired of videos coming down my timeline with no trigger warning. I just, it's not fun. So, um, I say that to say, I found myself this past week questioning, Shark, is this really what you want to do? And I think this is still something that I want to do. However, I need to stay in the space of what I love, which is pop culture type journalism. There is a reason why when I did, when I completed my first internship, there is a, and that's the point of internships, right? The point of an internship is to really have a front row seat and walk away from it with a better idea of, oh, this is what I want to do, or that's something that I could never do. So with respect to that experience, I was in hard news. And I knew after that first internship, I said, this is not a place for me. This is not a place for me. And at the time, um, K 
Casey Anthony. That Remember Casey Anthony? That was a big, 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 big story. And my favorite thing to do, I remember I went out with the, an assignment reporter and we did what's called MOS interviews, man on the street interviews, which is basically we walked up to people and interviewed them based on, you know, to get reactions. And I was like, oh, this I can do. But all of this death and destruction and despair and tornadoes and property damage and just, it was too much for me to handle. So, um, yeah. So, and, and this week kind of felt the same. This whole year has felt heavy. But like I was telling you all at the top of last hour, uh, I, I know a lot of us have written off 2020 and called it a trash year. And I'm not taking away from that. But I come from the, the, the train of thought, the school of thought that multiple truths can exist at one time. So while this has been a devastating year in more ways than one, it's also been a very transformative year as well, if you let it. If you let it. If you let it. And when I talk to you all about these things, I'm not, I'm not trying to enforce or project my views or my journey onto you. I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing. What works for me might not work for you. And I understand that. I hope you do as well. I'm just telling you what worked for me. And what worked for me, like I still feel like I'm still getting these messages where that I'm not really seeking them out and they're still landing in my lap. Like when I read that damn chapter, I'm reading, currently reading um, Bell Hooks All About Love. I have been struggling to get through this book. And it's not that, when I say struggling, I don't mean that it has like complex language, like The Seat of the Soul. Now The Seat of the Soul is a book that I have not finished. I've had that book for like four years and I have not finished. I put it down one day and never picked it back up because I believe that Gary Zukov's book, The Seat of the Soul, deserves coursework around it. For me, it's just the language and every page, it's not even every chapter, I feel like every page I have to unpack with someone and something. Bell Hook's work is not like that. It just was, like, like, like I said, when I say struggle, it just was I have not been in a headspace for reading. I binge watched Rami on Hulu uh, season two because I'd already seen season one. And I've just been in a TV space. I've been watching YouTube videos. I have been um, FaceTiming. Y'all know I'm a FaceTime girl. I've been FaceTiming and so, uh, yeah. So to pick that book back up, and I think I powered through three chapters yesterday. I should have grabbed it for, for this, but I'm not gonna get up. It's titled All About Love by Bell Hooks. And so um, what I was telling Char on the last hour is that I literally started this year kind of joking around and I had two themes for my birthday. And my birthday is at the top of the year. So this is pre-corona, like we kind of knew about it, but it hadn't hit us yet. Um, this is pre a lot of this stuff. And so because my birthday is January 2nd, the day after New Year's, I had a birthday dinner and my two things for this year were do nothing without intention, which is a nod to um, Solange's latest album. Do nothing without intention. Move with intention. Move with purpose. Do nothing without intention. And then the second thing was count it all joy. Because, I mean, I was playing around like I love gospel music, but there's a, a song. It's either with BB, CC, Whitney, and or maybe I'm thinking of Hold Up the Lights. Hold up the lights. Y'all know the song. If you're a Martin fan, Martin Lawrence. If you're a Martin fan, then you know the song um, Hold Up the Lights because uh, Pam and Gina performed it in a talent show on an episode. But I say that to say they have this uh, song called Count It All Joy and that was one of my themes. And so the year that I've had has been a very emotionally taxing one, but it's one where I feel like I have still been able to stay connected especially with my turning point in July. And so I FaceTimed my mother yesterday because I didn't know who to call. Everybody I knew, like it's weird when I call people because everybody's occupied, even I'm occupied sometimes, but I needed someone to share this with, to share the goodness of this news with, is when I came across Bell Hooks referencing Count It All Joy in the chapter dedicated to like self-love and being connected to the divine, I burst out in tears because it felt like another one of those Easter eggs that I feel like God, that I feel like the universe, that I feel like the source has been planting for me along my journey <laughs> like this. And oh, also the big, big kicker of it is that I was like, okay, I'm going to read three chapters and then finish Rami on Hulu. And I think I pushed myself. I was like, you know, I'm in a reading mood. I made me some tea. 
I was like nestled up in the bed, like in a little reading nook type thing. And I was like, I'm going to read one more chapter. And I read that chapter and that's when, where the passage was. And it talks about how so many people, and I've been guilty of this, and I'm trying, I'm, I'm working on not being guilty of this, like developing a, a practice, a spiritual practice where you don't only run to the source. You don't only acknowledge your spiritual practice when you are, sorry, I just got a, I just got a notification, excuse me. But, uh, <laughs> but you don't only reference that spiritual practice when you're going through it. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of those things where you're constantly, and Shar kind of talked about this in last hour when we were closing out, about just remaining in a space of gratitude. And I feel like in order to remain in a space of gratitude, that is what inherently keeps you connected to the source because you're always grateful. And it's work. It's work. It's not as easy as just, oh, remaining in a space of gratitude because life is full of, you know, hills and valleys, honey. So that's work. At least for me, it is. I don't know. It may, may be different for you. Maybe gratitude comes easy for you. For me, some days are easier than others. That's what I'll say. And so, uh, but Bell Hooks kind of referenced that in the work in that our lessons do not miraculously go away. These traumas, these things that we deal with, these things that have kind of landed in our laps, whether we've asked for them or not, they don't just go away just because you're going through it and you decide to pray and fast for seven days. It's almost like we have to, you know, repurpose these things. And then one day maybe they'll go away. But for the now, in order to better yourself, it's kind of like you have to repurpose these things. And this is what kind of sucks about it is there's no finish line. You all know this, right? That is what really, really, really kind of sucks about this. You approach this work if you're really committed and dedicated to working on yourself. Because, you know, working on yourself will then attract the right people. And that way you can express love. You can really give love to the right people because you've already done the work for yourself. But what really sucks about it is there's no tangible finish line. It's no like, like a book almost. It's no like, oh, this is the final chapter and then I'll be done. I'll have all the answers and I'll perpetually love myself. These are exercises. Everything that we're doing, every step that we're taking are exercises that we have to acquire and that we have to constantly refer back to in times of trouble. That's what it is. And that's what kind of makes, I don't want to say makes life annoying because life is a gift. To have breath in your lungs is a gift. But that is what kind of, it would be easier if there was a, a tangible finish line to know that I'm going to be doing the self work to the day that I die. It's overwhelming to think about. But the goal for me is to, uh, for, for me to just better myself. So when, when, when life's, you know, hills and valleys hit, the way in which I might have reacted at 27, now at 32, I have, I go to that toolbox and I know what to pull and how to pull it and when to pull it to make sure that I don't go to that place emotionally that I went at 27. Because now I know more. Now I've lived more life. And I feel like that's the great, that's like, that's the point of life. That's what I feel. One of the main, main, main points of life. And in turn, with being on this, on this journey of self-love and self-discovery, I feel like the more that I love myself, the more that I break down those walls or attempt to, because I'm not perfect, the more then I will be able to give that to someone else. You get what I'm saying? It draws hard, hard sands in the line. I mean, hard lines in the sand. I know how I expect to be treated, so I will not accept anything less from you because I've been doing the work. I've been loving myself. Everything that I require from a partner, I'm now practicing that on myself. I'm not looking for a romantic partner to save me. I'm not even looking for a friend to save me. It's like I'm practicing. I got to go to that toolbox and practice it on myself because if I can't give it to myself, I'll never be able. I'll never be ready and I'll never be willing to fully accept it from someone else because then that becomes an emotional crutch. That's how trauma bonds are formed because you haven't done the self work. D am I making sense? I feel like, you know, I know I'm rambling, but that's the point of this. But I hope I'm making sense to you all. It all starts with self and a lot of people run from that. A lot of people run from that because 
even myself, I've been guilty of it. We have these visions, we have these uh, ideas, these concepts of what self-love and self-work look like based on the world around us or based on someone else's journey, but it shows up for everybody in an individual way. That's why I keep saying what works for me might not work for you and you gotta respect that. I'm just sharing what's been working for me. And that might change, but you know, right now it's been a matter of undoing it all, undoing it all. And I think that is what messes a lot of people up. You know, you ask, you know, for deliverance, you ask for the tools. And I know for me, for example, in my mind, there would be a rollout, you know, there would be like a, I want to do the work, God. And then I'd get a pebble and deal with that. And then I get another pebble and deal with that. I wasn't expecting to get a whole, you know, rock yard. So it's like, it's like I was diving into the work and everything came at once. And now it's up to me to compartmentalize and prioritize what to the best of my ability, what I can tackle, what I have the emotional, uh, I guess, inaptitude to, to tackle right now. Because there's always work to be done. So I might not be able to tackle the feelings of little five-year-old Char. But in this space, I can tackle the feelings of 14-year-old Char. You get what I'm saying? There's always, some, there's always work to be done. There's always work to be done. And give yourself breaks. Like, we're, we're not machines. You got to give yourself a break. But staying in the space of black feminist work and of, 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 of novels and of autobiographies. I love a memoir and an autobiography. You learn from other people, you know? You see, you know, tangible things, like you really learn from other people. And so staying in that space of like documentary, like I've just been hungry. I've been very, very thirsty to kind of pack my brain with knowledge because I want to be able to, that might be the next space that I step into. You all know that I, I do a lot of pop culture things, but maybe the, maybe the career pivot for me is self-help. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, because I don't have all the answers. But I feel it's been a physical feeling, y'all. Like, I'm not joking. It's been a physical things that I've gone through this year. And the healing process has been something that has been, it's been very loud. And unlike anything else that I've ever encountered in my life. Have I ever thought of doing a book club? No, but maybe I should. You know what? It's so funny because tons of people have already, you know, kind of proposed this idea. But the thing is, here's the, okay, here's the reason. By the way, if you all have any questions, use the, the question mark icon right down by the comments. I, I, maybe I'm in the mood for answering some questions today. We got about 30 minutes left. But the reason why I, will, I, I, I haven't really explored doing a book club is that my books come in waves. Like, for example, I've had the Bell Hooks book for a minute. I haven't even read George M. Johnson's book, All Boys Aren't Blue or something like that. Like I've had that for months. Like I have like seven books I have to to, to catch up on. But the reason why I haven't done a, a book club, this is the real reason, is that I feel like themes matter. And the books that I read are all over the place, you know, with any given theme. And on top of that, I read on my own. I try to finish a book a month, but it doesn't always uh, show up that way because just like everybody else, you know, I'd be going through stuff. So, and that's with respect to me having the Bell Hooks book for months now and just now kind of powering through that. And I recommend it to everyone. It kind of starts off a little like, where are we going with this? But around chapter three, I read three, four, and five yesterday, maybe six. I wish I would have brought it with me to talk to you all about but maybe I'll have a discussion around it when I'm done because when I tell you see Bell Hooks work is one of those books where you have the highlighter like this book has the highlight I've been using the highlighter and post-it notes both <laughs> both because I've just been having ahas like every two pages I'm like oh this is worth remembering the book has been highlighted so much to the point where if it fell on the floor and if I was ever looking for a passage to talk about there would be one like that's how heavy my highlighter has been working. I even, very rarely do I write in books, I even grabbed a pen and wrote in corners by, by passages that I was really uh, moved by. Jared, the book that I'm currently reading is titled All About Love by Bell Hooks. 
And it's, it's like 276 pages. It's an easy read. But that's why I haven't done a book club. Because I want to be on my own time. And I'm going through some radical... I feel a burp coming. I really don't want to burp. I mean, you all know I burped on camera. I burped on camera during the first Sundays with Shard and, st and it's still haunting me in my sleep. And this is water. I had tea earlier, but I put water in here. Still with the tea bag. This is throat coat tea. But anyway, so uh, yeah, that is, I don't know if I'm, let me see. If I, do I have anything on a list? It's been a tough week. I don't know what to tell you all. You know, last week we kind of talked about, I think it's wild how I was joking about how you never know which headline is coming up next. And literally after I ended last week, Sundays with Shark, hours later we had, you know, the Jacob Blake situation. It's just, ugh, it has me on the edge of my seat for what is coming this week. What is coming this week? You know? Thank you. What is coming this week? But I'm excited. Despite, in spite everything, despite everything, I'm, I still am excited about life. I can't afford to not be excited about life. Not right now. This is a tender time. And I hope, my only prayer is that I can keep this energy as we transition into a new season. Like I mentioned, like September 23rd is like when fall officially begins, which I'm ready for. I'm ready for leggings and, and heeled booties. You know the uniform. A good cardigan with deep pockets, an oversized one with the, with the deep cut V-neck and a burgundy lip. Maybe I'll debut some new hair around then. Mm. But I, I my, like I was saying, my only prayer is that, well, not my only prayer, but one of my prayers is that, Char, we, we need to keep this energy as we transition and change seasons. And, you know, the holidays, you know, are coming. And even though I, if you're like me, you're still struggling to accept 2020 as the real. I still have pockets of time and moments of time with just like, I'm staring in the mirror and I'm like, I'm ready to wake up from this. I, I think I'm ready to wake up from this. Okay, Mr. Mike G said, I'm a hoodies and shorts girl too. And I like the real short shorts that show the bottom cup of the, bu the butt cheeks. I like the real short shorts and a cute little hoodie. I prefer pullover hoodies versus zip up hoodies. I prefer the pull up with the pockets. Ooh, yes. That's the kind of girl I am. But anyway, um, th so these are things, just lingering thoughts. But I found that what works for me is just taking each day as it comes. I can't afford to think about September, October, November, December. I can, what I can afford to think about is August 31st, tomorrow, and having things to look forward to. I got to work tomorrow. Like I got little stuff that I, you know, I still have my hands on a lot of pots, you all. That's the thing. I am working for free in a lot of aspects, which I've severely slowed down, but I also have a lot of good, good, good things with a lot of good companies. Like I'm, I'm working, you know, and I'm volunteering my time and booking stuff and, you know, but tomorrow, the highlight of what I'm looking forward to tomorrow is going to the grocery store, getting something really fatty. Well, I don't know if I want, and when I say fatty, I don't mean in like a fat phobic type way. Please don't twist my language. I mean something that's like really caloric. Let me put, put it that way. Highly caloric instead of fatty. But I don't know if I want like a snack, like a really cal highly caloric snack, or if I want to go and get me like a meal. Like if I want to go get me something like deep fried from South of the Ten. And then I'm going to get me a nice bottle of some, some sort of white wine. I mean, I have red, but I've been in a really white wine type mood lately. I'm going to chill that bottle of wine and I'm going to buckle up for verses, which I'm going to project onto one of these TVs in this apartment. And I'm going to get my life and maybe I'll live tweet. I still haven't decided if I'm coming to Twitter tonight. That's where I've been with this. <laughs> like I've been off of Twitter for like a week now. And I'm like, do I want to live tweet Potomac Housewives? Do I want to live tweet Lovecraft uh, Country? Because it, for me, it's one of those things like I took a step back from Twitter and now it's feeling a little comfortable. It's feeling a little comfortable away from Twitter. It's feeling a little comfortable away from Instagram. You all, I haven't been posting stories for what? 
I'm fatigued. I've seen memes floating around about, you know, how all of your black friends are fatigued. I know that I am. And like I, like I mentioned, you know, last week, it's been a change in language. The, cha this, the sharp change in language has been something that has really just made me go, hmm. You ever sit back in your seat and go, hmm. It's been a sharp change of language compared to what we saw last week when people were giving the thumbs up to transphobia, when people were, were jumping through hoops to justify Tory Lanez shooting Meg in the foot. And then we lose our beloved, our sexy, our talented Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman. And now everybody's talking point, everybody's hot take is you never know what people are going through. Be kind, be kind. Be kind. But this energy didn't exist a week ago. This is the longest episode of Black Mirror that I've ever witnessed, that I've ever, this is a virtual episode, right? <laughs> right? This has to be. This is an interactive, I, we are all apart. Well, I don't know about you all. You all might really be here. I'm a part of some type of Netflix experiment, some interactive episode of Black Mirror that I signed up for in March that I just didn't, I forgot I signed up for. And the simulation, I'm waiting for the simulation to break because there's no way, you know? And I feel like if you're like me, I don't know if this has just been a symptom of 2020, just with me having, paying more attention to my phone, but I feel like people are meaner. I feel like people have been meaner this year. Am I alone in this? I feel like people have been meaner this year. Well, I don't know if they've been meaner or if I'm just now really, really paying attention to comments and not even comments directed at me because they come, believe it or not. Not even comments particularly directed at me, but just comments that I see on, on some of these blogs and stuff. I feel like everybody like, where is the light? Where is the love? Where is the compassion? Everybody's hot takes are so mean. Do y'all know how much energy it takes to be mean? Like, I know y'all are wearing yourselves out. I know you are. I know, I know you are. But not the lovely people watching me. Not the lovely, because the people watching me, I know we got some sense. I know people who watch Sundays with Char got some, some good sense, the sense that God gave them. But these people that I've seen, like, it feels like everybody's so mean, y'all. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. So... Um, living in a bubble, but I'm not in an ill-informed bubble. I'm minding my business in my apartment, maybe calling up a friend and going to lunch. Still swiping, still talking to guys. Do I have any dating updates? Well, I kind of have one. So this, this one guy, uh, <laughs> which I only have a month, I mean, not a month, a week left. So we'll see what comes from this because I said I was only going to give myself a month on this dating app that I joined. And Friday, which will be Beyonce's 39th birthday, um, that'll mark a month and I'm gonna delete the app because it's not really adding anything into to my life. But what I will say is this one guy uh, I met through the app, not like in person. We started conversing. I liked his humor. I was like, okay, late in the midnight hour, is God going to turn it around? Am I meeting someone with some sense? Like, he seemed cool. I liked his look. Uh, my only thing is I really wasn't a fan of the way he dresses. But I see, I'm not superficial. I'm able to look past that. It's not anything that's like, ooh, it's just not anything that I'm necessarily used to. Um, but I'm, like I said, I'm not superficial. I'm willing to look past that. However, um, so we, we really hit it off and there's jokes being exchanged and we talk about possibly going to the beach together. Everything's good. And then he offers me his number and I'm like, okay, cool. You know, um, and we start texting and then the conversation has already dried up. Now let me know if I'm being emotionally immature. Okay. So here's the thing. He gives me his number. I text him. I kind of led the conversation from there. The next day comes, and everything's fine in the, in the conversation, by the way. And I know it's very, very hard to pick up tonality and intention and things like that in text, but everything's fine. The next day, there are a few hours that go by, and I should mention, I should preface this by saying, I'm not a fan of clinginess. I am not the girl that requires a good morning text every morning. Like, I do not like 
I like attention, but I'm not someone who requires lengthy day-to-day interaction. Like we can text and be okay. It would be nice to FaceTime to see each other, but I'm not someone who requ- that That's the point I'm trying to make. So the next day rolls around. I noticed that, you know, I thought we hit things off really well. And I noticed that I haven't heard from him. So I let people got to work. L- listen, Char even got stuff to do. So after I answered all of my emails, because I do this thing where I force myself to try to answer all of my emails by a certain time because I'm up at 7 a.m. And so I like have my little private devotional and I say my prayers and I have maybe some Cheerios or some tea or something, you know, because I'm also doing intermittent fasting. I only eat between the hours of 10 and 6 and on a wonky day, 10 and 7. So, uh, and I try to answer my emails by like noon, but it's hard. If you're like me, as soon as you answer an email, there's like two more pings that go off for unrelated things. So it's like, okay, I'm going to tackle this and get back to this person. And then there's like two or three more email notifications because the world is still spinning. But anyway, I say that to say around three, I text him. Um, And we had another lovely conversation. And then the next day I didn't say anything and he didn't say anything. And then (laughs) the next day I didn't say anything and he didn't say anything. And here we are today. I haven't said anything and he hasn't. So that seems to be the reoccurring theme for me within this uh, soft dating, I guess, that I'm doing in COVID or attempting to, is that I feel like, I feel the labor is back in my lap. Why are people incapable of holding, having, initiating conversation? What is it? I think it might be a socialization, you know? I think it might be a social, I don't know. I don't know, but I would love for you to ask me some things, get to try to get to know me. Jared says, just call him. Ooh. <laughs> and say what? What do I say? I'm going to have to be driving the conversation again. That's something to entertain. Maybe I will call him. Maybe I should call. Shout out to Kay Michelle. I was just tweeting about that song last week. She was really in her bag with that one. Kimberly Pate really did what she needed to do with that one. Maybe I will call him Jared. You know, I'm not opposed to calling. I'm not a scaredy cat. (laughs) Um, But we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, I'm not holding my breath because I overall, like I told you all last week, I've yet to meet a man or to engage in conversation with a man who has wowed me. Tons of attractive men, tons, but there's nothing behind it. There's nothing behind it. And I guess sometimes that's okay if that's what you're looking for. But Shara is looking for something to work with, something with some substance. My God. And I feel like when they don't have anything behind it, when I say that, I'm not saying that they're fully like dense or whatever. What I'm saying is that they probably do have something behind the good looks, but what's behind it is, you know, terrorism, <laughs> patriarchy and misogyny and sex. It's a, nothing liberating, nothing, you know, progressive. So, but yeah. Okay, Mr. Mike G says, don't overthink it. Do you think I'm overthinking it? I don't think I'm overthinking it. I don't think I'm overthinking it. All I'm telling you all is this is an observation. I'm observing that in every interaction that I've had since I've started this endeavor, I've been the one throwing my fishing hook out there. While all the while being told that I'm interesting and I seem like, you know, I got a, you know, a good head on my shoulders, but there's no further interrogation of that. So I don't know. Like I said, I might be coming to y'all next Sunday and being like, child, I, I didn't, I'm back. I didn't delete it. You know, who's to say? But at this point, you all know how I am. You all know wh- how I am. I've been on for a month. I feel like I've seen all that I need to see. <laughs> I've seen all that I need to see. Okay, Jared's joining. I don't know we have left maybe 20 minutes, maybe, maybe 15. Let's see what Jared has to say for the after show. Sure. My love, how are you? Good afternoon, Jarrett. 
I am. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm in here meal prepping. I turned you on. You're on uh, the Amazon Echo, just playing in the house. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, Char is so good at this. Like, you've been going for like 40 minutes and having a full on conversation that I'm thoroughly enjoying. Um, but Thank I want you. you to, I just want you to call this boy. Just call him. Like, you're not overthinking it. I don't. I don't think. I think Mike. Uh, who is it, Mr. Mike G? I think he was just saying like, don't overthink it. But I don't think. You're overthinking it, but just call. And say what? Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Okay. If the conversation is good, I think you can call and just say, hey. And my friend Michael. So many mm -hmm. people hate phone calls. This will be interesting to see if he uh, drags me to voicemail or not. So what's going to happen? He's not going to answer the phone and he'll call you back. He's going to be like, whoa. She's calling me. And then, you know. Which, see, Jared, see, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this isn't me making up, making excuses. But here's the thing, is I always get accused of being, like, not headstrong, but aggressive. That may read as a, you got to look at the, the, the position. Well, like, yes, it's taking a chance. Yes. But the optics of this is, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, because yes, when I but do like, what I want, I typically Char, go for it. But like, Shar, you don't need to be with someone that's going to be intimidated by you. So like, if if it's a Well, tell that to my entire adult life, because that essentially is what it boils down to. Listen, if men, the guy's Men be... entering my life for the sole purpose of lowering my self-esteem to put me in my damn place. That, but, that's my dating but issue. Char, but Shar, if it's, if it's a guy who's going to be intimidated by you calling him, that just lets you know he ain't the right one. True. If he, if he can see you calling and be like, oh, and then take the call and have a good conversation and be fine and not be intimidated, that's something that, that could work. But see, I feel like to have that energy, it would be there in the text as well. You get what I'm saying? Maybe. Maybe. But if you guys are having a good convo via text, you know, give it a shot. Just do it. Maybe I should call. Shout out to K. Michelle. What a hey, song. You and this K. Michelle shout out, I can't say. It's it's a good song. It's have you listened to it? Have you ever heard it? Mm hmm I don't know. Jarrett. Jarrett like, we, hold on, because Simone said uh, Simone says she's in oh, you're about to get off. Who me? Did you no. did you say you're about no, no, to get off? No, no, no. I said when we're off, i I will listen to it. Simone says she's an aggressive woman who's married to a guy who's cool with it. You lucked out. Because Listen. I don't think the word that I'm looking for is aggressive, but I, the way that things are framed, like, I'm, I, I, I say it like I mean it. You know, I think, I've, it, I think you should be saying it like you mean it. I don't think, I feel like you are, like, an outspoken, like, you talk for a living. So, like, you can't just, you can't have someone who's going to be, like, intimidated by the fact that you talk. If so, then that's not going to be the right person. I'm done for. diminishing myself for male ego. Because that was another thing I used to do. Not dumb myself down, but maybe not talk as much. <laughs> I, I, think you, I think you should talk as much as you talk and let them live. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Jared, I'm not holding my breath. The pickings are slim. And I have a fundamental distrust of men that I'm trying to work through. I'm, see, that's part of my self-work that I was talking about earlier. I have a fundamental distrust because no one has shown me otherwise. Even in the the women that I know in their lives. No one has shown me otherwise. And I think because we have been socially conditioned to kind of accept conventional lies from men when it comes to like anything from infidelity to like, it's so easy for men. And that's not to say that women don't lie, but it's not as accepted when women lie. Like it is literally part ingrained in our culture for girl, did you know he had a secret baby? And it's like, we'll still make it work. Or girl, you know he cheated on me. We'll still make it work. Like that's what's it. it's not. Women aren't granted that same courtesy. So that's what I mean when there's like power in men's lies. And so I think because I always approach something with clear communication. Yes. If you ain't feeling something, if you ain't feeling me, let's just end this. But there's a selfishness where they want to have their cake and eat it too. And that has led me to my specific journey has led me to a fundamental distress because Bashar, I think you will, I think if you call this guy or any guy, like, you cannot be, you can't, you can't tone yourself down 
to try and raise that person. Like Whitney Houston taught us that. No shame, right? But Whitney Houston taught us like you can't dim your light to try and equalize. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not winning a lifetime achievement award and saying give it up for the king of R and B. Not for my lifetime achievement award from BET. I'm no done. sir. I'm done. <laughs> no sir. No man. That's what I'm saying though. Like you have to. You got to be full of yourself and like let him either rock with it or don't because you have a, a big life, a big personality and a big future. And like, if he can't take this, he definitely shouldn't be going with you in the future. Yeah, it's hard. One guy, what I will write though, Jared, is I did one guy I was talking to last night asked what I was doing, right? And I said, I'm relaxing. Like, what are you doing? And he responded and said he was masturbating. And I said, oh, and then he unmasked with me. <laughs> Char said, that's not what I'm looking for. That's not my tea. I get it. Then don't, then don't participate and like find somebody else. <laughs> so he doesn't, he doesn't know that you're, he doesn't know that you're Char Navarro. That's a little bit <laughs> more conservative, right? I know. Listen, when's the last time you saw Anna on The View? It's been a minute. I don't know. I haven't. Well, the view's been gone for a month, so. But you see how that's what her that how that's reflective of when the last time you might have saw me some. <laughs> you know what? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, but yeah. So I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm. I, uh, uh, maybe I will call. Just call. And if he doesn't answer, he doesn't answer. And if he does, especially because I'm trying to rid myself of of. Well, I'm not trying to, like, I'm doing really, really well with ridding myself of past things that I've been dealing with. And so I'm in a space right now where honestly, Jared, I'm, I need to answer the question, is romantic intimacy something that I'm even ready for? Maybe because it's coming off the heels of so many different things, like so many different things. I'm like, should I give myself like a break? Am I ready to have feelings and emotions at that capacity again? Or should I just sit my ass down for a minute? Maybe. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic. There are no wrong answers to questions. Like, is... Whatever you need is what you need. But what... what's, fueling th what's fueling this, and I've been very open about this, what's fueling this has been loneliness, which I, well, I, you know, I've been telling you this and I've told you all watching this that I, it's the long standing loneliness. Like, of course I've de dealt with bouts of loneliness, but there was always an escape. There's always a girl, I'm coming over. What you doing? Let's go to the club and, and dance to WAP. Let's go get drinks. Like there was always an escape. Well, we ain't ever danced to WAP in a club, but I get I know, I, I know, but saying. it would be glorious if I had the opportunity. Like I'm ready to, to twerk this thing down to the ground to WAP. If, if you want to come over and watch Versus tomorrow. You, want, <laughs> oh, you, said, really? you, see, you said you want to see a fatty food south of the 10. You know I'm south of the 10. <laughs> so get fatty food. I'm on keto. I'll act like I don't see it. And you can come watch Versus with me. Okay. Well, I maybe that is something that I will entertain, Jared. I will keep you posted. However, um, what was I saying? You made me you, forget. What I... You and this long A, Jared. I, you know I hate that I can't do it back because I don't know how to do that for Char. But... <laughs> it's something that I'll never let go after we, well, leading up to the Wendy episode that I did for your podcast, because that's how I imagine Wendy Williams to... Uh, pronounce your name Jared I love it I love Jared it. but uh oh yeah so what I was saying is coming off the heels of like all those emotions and I know what it's like to work through things and dealing with I was feeling guilt over something that I shouldn't have felt guilt over uh but that's just where I was at the time like that was what was ingrained in my mind like and so having being on, on the other side of those heavy 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 feelings it's like is this something that I even want to do or am I just bored that's fair. I think that's a fair question. And I, I, oh, that's that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. My loneliness. So I've dealt with bouts of loneliness, but long standing. But I think that what this has done has brought me. Um, like I've always enjoyed my own company, but I think I've gotten used to it now. Well, but I think it's it's part of being in the pandemic, right? Like I think a lot of people, especially folks that live alone or at home by themselves, or like you know, quarantined alone, like that's absolutely something that a lot of us are going through that are just like not interacting with people in person a lot. And that's but why see, you, I was saying to you, I was joking with you, like, I feel like I'm on FaceTime a whole lot more than I'm used to. And you and I are on FaceTime a whole lot more than we used to be. So I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. 
But you know, you're one of the few people who know you were at my 32nd birthday at the Joey's downtown LA. And I was so intentional about my birthday. And I was also so intentional of deading what I felt were, were dead connections with people, dead relationships. But do you know that in COVID, I've been tempted to reach out to certain people. And I'm like, mm -mm, Char, don't do it. S stick to your convictions. <laughs> this ended for a reason. You entered, you intentionally entered this new year and this new decade with this mindset of not carrying the things of the past decade into this one. So if stick to your conventions, but, but convictions. But I'm someone who every little type of situation I had, I got rid of. I got rid of, and right. now I'm like, oh. I mean, if you're gonna, for me, I've gotten rid of situations as well, but also like, if you're going to, if any of it is like calling back to you, you have to approach it with the new energy, right? Like, so look, this is what it is. I can't, like for me, it's like, I can't do the ambiguity of like, what is this? What are you doing? What do you want? The conversation is just very distinct. Like, but what do you want? Okay, well, we're gonna do X. What you can't just let it be ambiguous that I can't at least. No, I can't. But I also, if, if I'm being fully transparent, I have no interest in moving backwards. Moving That's forward. Fair. Don't do I that. have no interest in none. And I'm still reeling from you all know it. So I've talked about this. If you listen to Kiss and Tell, I've talked about this. There was, you know, my world shattered when someone I was involved with just turned up and got married on me. Whew, that wasn't fun. I didn't know he had a girlfriend, much less a fiance. He kept that concealed. Because he knew, you I believe. Beyonce, I just want to note that you didn't say fiance, you said Beyonce. That's I said Beyonce? You said Beyonce. And Sorry, I know she's always on my mind. Her, she she's said. always on my mind. But I believe that had, I believe that he knew that had I known, I would have cut it off because I would have. Because I'm someone who lives in the, now when it comes time for my wedding day, I don't have time for no mess. So I'm not going to entertain that. But that was something. You want everybody that, to forever hold their damn peace. Right. Yeah. And even <laughs> yes. then, when I found out that he got married, I ended things with him. He was still trying to do things with me. And that's something that I thought that I had gotten over, because that happened in 2018. I thought I had gotten over it, but it took for this year for me to realize, no, bitch, you're not over that. <laughs> My feelings aren't as hurt as they were, but I think that that's one of those things that speaks to how, you know, we hop on this carousel, this emotional carousel of like, filling in the gaps like well I still got work to do and I got you know instead of addressing head on because a lot of this stuff is painful at least for me it is that's something that's very painful for me so, so I speaking of things that are painful for people I want to address that I see in the comments here ABN 75 Mr. Mike G people are asking uh, it's been painful for us to not have a podcast from you so what's what's happening with that is there a show coming like me you and I have never discussed this before ever before so I I don't know how you feel about doing any kind of a show regularly. <laughs> I'm just, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist. I saw a question. I asked it. That's all. That's all. I, fine. That's fine. I'll take that. No, this is for right now, you all, honestly, for right now. Um, what I will say is that, um, there might be another podcast coming. Um, by the way, oh yes, Jace and I, There's. I, I always have to say this, there's no beef, I love Jace. Jace actually was just over my house two weeks ago. We went and cheated and, and slid into Burger King and got there two for six. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, so, so but there, there might be another podcast on the way with me and a co-host, possibly, Okay, like I'm working, like literally I have something to do towards it tomorrow. I've been okay. working on this for about a month. So that's the tea with that. And then, um, and then you won't have me here, damn it. Is this not enough? You get what do two, you want from her, people? Sorry, you get no. two hours of me every Sunday for 10 weeks. Two hours of me. <laughs> Too much is never enough, dear, apparently. Oh, uh, someone says we saw you post a photo shoot with uh, me and Jace. So that was not a photo shoot. That was actually uh, something being recorded for something that I'm, I can't talk about because it, it doesn't come out until next year. So you'll see then what that post was about. But it was but, not a photo shoot. 
So when we see something next year and you have braids, we will know. We'll go back to this moment. Yes, because I'm not going to have braids for too much longer. I might have braids for the remainder of this year, actually. You know that's just the mood that I, that, that's you just where I I'm at. The braids. I love it. That's just, I, I hate doing them, but. You like the low maintenance after they're done, though. The thing is, I have my, my hair for my situation. I already have it. I just have been so lazy to getting around to color it because, you know, I want to go back blonde. So I've been so, it's been like in my closet for like maybe a month now. Like I have hair. I remember you telling me it was coming in the mail a long time ago. No, I didn't order it from me. I went to the hair shop, LA. You were, talking about, you were talking about getting it soon. And that was a while ago. Yeah, I went on Wilshire for the first time in a long time. You know what's on Wilshire. Um, and I went and bought hair and then I came back and just kind of kept it there. Because I, I have this weird relationship where it's like, oh my gosh, I love a good unit. I love a good wig. Everybody knows this, but it's just like, I kind of felt guilty buying weave. <laughs> I don't know if it's like conversations that have had, th that we've had this year with just your blackness type thing, but- Oh, you're gonna give us, you, you think about giving us a kinky straight now? No. A, a Desna I definitely have Brazilian wavy. Okay, and it's going to be blonde. It's going to be cute. I'm gonna bust that bitch down the middle and serve you all. It's gonna be multi-dimensional, chestnut low lights, and I'm gonna give you all a look. And it's gonna be without warning. Are you gonna, you're gonna hop on Sundays with Char and be like, who is she? Without warning? We don't even get like an email alert, a push notification? No. Mm -mm. Okay. okay. Mm -mm. Jared, I think we only have five minutes left. Okay. So let's I'm... flip. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, let's flip this on it uh, on his head, and you tell us your business now. Let's do Sundays with Jared. Oh, I I I gotta get back to meal prepping. Um, <laughs> I, what What do you want to know? What are you meal prepping? I am meal prep. I'm on keto right now. Um, I see Travell is in here, and he's making fun of me for being on keto. Um, but I'm on keto, so I have done um, like I did pork chops. I just did zucchini. I'm doing like this cauliflower. How did you do your pork chops? Did you? Uh... I just like pan fried them. Um, I did them with like a bunch of seasoning, pan fried them, and then took all the fat from that and then cooked the zucchini in that, um, topped it with, you know, seasonings and some parm, and that's going to be really good. I just did this cauliflower mash thing that my best friend swears by. So um, I'm, I'm seasoning that as we go. I, it's literally spatulas right here. I'm right in the kitchen. So um doing that and just trying to meal prepping for me makes it easier to be on a diet travel so. says you can't cook travel can't cook Travelle. i have to disagree with that because i've had your food two or three times at this point you, you've been here with travel and think. not only is the presentation divine but i've never had to add anything i've never had to turn into oprah and say is, is, is there salt and maybe pepper is there <laughs> at most i have my hot sauce so that yeah. you bring with you, but we do have a whole situation with hot sauces, which coffee. I now keep a bottle in my car. Beep beep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, that sounds fun. We have two minutes left. What's your love life look like? Oh, I don't even know what that um, is. I you know I'm out here dipping and doing up to things in a pan whatever. in the pandemic, Jared, Mister Responsible no. Journalist. I'm not like I'm out wiling out. I mean. Um, everything is a calculated risk is the way that I, I say it. Um, I am cautious. I haven't really been doing that much, to be fair. Uh, y'all are y'all damn calculated risks. I'm fed up. I'm tired of it. Y'all love I mean, a calculated risk. I, I look at it from the perspective of I'm not doing very much, let's just be honest, but like sometimes you do a little something and you just gotta, you gotta be thoughtful about it. You gotta ask the right questions. Kind of the same way people ask questions about what do you yeah, have? but let me tell you, let me tell you, they be out here lying. I mean, but anyway, call me Sister Mary Cla Clarence, honey. Dolores Van Cartier. I would rather call you Dolores Van Cartier than Sister Mary Clarence. Sister Mary Nazareth, honey. But Sister, anyway, yeah. um, Jared, I'm going to let you go. We got 30 seconds left. Thank you all for joining me for the after show. Look at Travel's emojis. Thank you for joining me for the after show. You should go back and watch hour one with uh, Char did that. Make sure you follow her. And I'll see you all next week. I have another fun guest, Jared. I hope you're in the building at, at 11 a.m. 
next I will week. be. I will be. Absolutely. It's going to be good. Enjoy you all Sundays. Bye-bye now. Bye, hon. <laughs>